Good morning, family. I'm Dakari Middlebrooks, Creative Director here at Mount Zion Baptist Church, and I'm so excited that you all decided to join us for part three of The Power to Be. One of the most fascinating things about this series is that it's caused us to wrestle with a lot of questions. Why am I here? What am I doing? And what am I after? I believe one of the greatest challenges to becoming everything that God wants you to be is being afraid to admit your truth. I believe the greatest threat to becoming everything God has for you is pretending to be something that you're not. So I ask today as you watch that you engage with the service. Maybe you wrestle a little bit with some of the tensions that you face, but more importantly, you feel inspired. You feel motivated to change your life. If you like what we're doing, if you love our service, make sure you share it on your platform. Make sure you stay connected and we're gonna stay connected as well. Let's step right into part three of this amazing series, The Power to Be. This is the day that the Lord has made. Be real with trust and be glad in it. If you know God's been good to you, put some hearts on the screen, put some lights on the screen, and let us exalt his name. Let us praise him. If you love to praise the name of the Lord, hear it up. Old Tom, feel free to clap your hands. And some of your feet, here we go. So it says, I love to praise him. Say, I love to praise him. Oh, yeah. I love to praise I love to praise him. Say, I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise him. Yeah. I love to praise him. Say,
Thank God for you today, wherever you're watching around the world. I'm Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III, the Mount Zion Church right here in Nashville, Tennessee. And I want to thank you so much for streaming in with us on today, wherever you're streaming around the world. We're so excited about what we believe God is going to do today. And I'm telling you, people of God, it is not by accident that you are tuned into this service at this time. God has a word for your life. I want you to prepare yourself, settle yourself, get yourself together because let me tell you, there's a word that's going to come straight into your situation on today and I'm excited to share it with you. As we always do when we open up our services, we come together in prayer. Whatever has been on your mind, whatever you've been dealing with, believing God for, this is that moment where we center ourselves and we come together and believe God to the power of prayer. Do you know there's power in prayer? I'm telling you, the Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous, it avails much. I want you to know people of God are praying certainly for so much happening in our country. It is prayer time. We're certainly praying for those who are sick among us. We pray today. I want this church to come into agreement to call the name Chloe. She's 11 years old and uh, the doctors found a brain tumor uh, and um, her family's member here mom or dad or grandmother and sister and they're very faithful members and Chloe she's 11 years old we want you to know that God's got you the surgery is on Tuesday and we thank God first of all that it was benign we also gonna praise God that they're gonna be able to get it without no damage occurring to you that you're gonna live a healthy life and for all of those who are also in hospital beds around the country, those who are in, in bereavement, know that right now we are coming into agreement right now, believing God for you. So right now, Father, we thank you. We bless you. You're such an awesome God. And God, you said we cast our cares upon you because you care for us. And so right now, God, we come into agreement right now in this space, believing God for healing, for breakthrough. Believing, God, that you're raising those up off of sick beds and you're healing broken hearts. We pray for strength and faith. And we pray that, God, today this service might shift somebody into a place of revelation, shift them into a place of a decision that will change their life forever. We give your name the glory because we believe something powerful is going to happen today. We thank you. We magnify your name. And we say to God be the glory for what shall happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo, we're thankful to God and we love you so much. I want to thank God for all of you, of course, uh, wherever you're watching around the world, whether you're in the United States, Europe, Africa, Asia, know that we appreciate you. Giving a shout out to all of my folks down there in Huntsville. We got a great group of folks down there in Huntsville. All my folks in the DMV, I love you. Louisiana, you know, we got a group of folks there. And we're so excited about it. And we've got some other groups that are coming along. Atlanta, uh, Dallas, if you want to be a part of that, we'll tell you how to do it in just a moment. But let me tell you, I want you to follow me. Follow me at Joseph Walker 3. Do it now. Follow my wife and Dr. Staff. We want to stay connected to you. If we really would appreciate it so much if you would stay connected to us. We certainly thank God for you. We also uh, want to know we are praying. Our prayers are going out for, of course, uh, our country and, of course, for uh, the passing of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We know she was an extraordinary, extraordinary jurist, and uh, our, our country will, will never be the same. She was a trailblazer, a powerful woman, and uh, let's just continue to pray for our country and pray for our world. Also, our prayers go out to... Uh, uh, the family of Bishop J. Delano Ellis. He is the uh, he was over the Joint College of Bishops. He was a bishop's bishop. He was a friend uh, to this preacher, and we certainly appreciate his life and legacy. So Mount Zion, continue to pray for all those who have fallen soldiers in our midst, and we certainly want to continue to keep them lifted up. Their prayers and family. Now we are uh, really excited about 
a podcast, Next Level Leader. So many of you have been supporting. I want you to spread the word. God is doing something crazy awesome with this, man. We are on our way trending toward 100,000 subscribers. And uh, I'm believing God for that in the next 30 days. So I want you to help us do that and uh, make certain that you support it. It means a lot to us if you do. Now, uh, on Tuesdays when we drop our podcast, we've got a new one coming this week. I promise you it's going to bless you. I'm telling you, you want to be a part of it. Now, also, Bible Study Wednesday, as you know, this 5-4 series we've been dealing with, winning at warfare. We're going to talk about the battle of the family, so stay tuned on that. I promise you it's going to bless you. Now, for those of you that would like to extend Mount Zion in your city, we want you to reach out to us at OOTB at mtzionnashville.org. That that will help us. Just let us know the city you're from. That even if you are from Huntsville, from the DMV area, from Shreveport or Baton Rouge, and you're like, I, I missed the first call, still, you can come on. Let us know you want to get the link because we're going to be letting you know uh, next uh, Sunday how we're going to be absolutely communicating going forward. And we got some things that are going on. So we're going to rearrange a few things on our calendar to get some updates that will be sent to all of these six cities that I've just mentioned and other cities who absolutely want to be a part. You can do that as well. Now, I do want you to save the date. Just want to uh, mention I'm going to be... Uh, participating in hosting really a town hall uh, with interim police chief John Drake next Monday, September the 29th. I think it's important for us to talk about community and policing. And of course, our city is preparing in a month or so to uh, select a mayor's going to select a new police chief. But I want to make sure that uh, community has a chance to speak to this and talk about what we what we need in our community regarding police relationships and all of that. So we're looking forward to this great town hall. We're going to invite you to be a part of it on Facebook Live to ask your questions. It's going to be awesome. And then, of course, I want to say to all of our senior members, all of our senior saints, I miss you all so much and love you. And we're going to be doing a special session just for ages 62 and older. So I want you to know, first week of October, be on the lookout. Lucretia Smith is going to be working with our office to coordinate that, sending out emails to you all. We're going to allow you to get on uh, on the Zoom. Or if you can't get on Zoom, you can get on a conference call. We'll do it both ways, but we just want to make sure you know that we're trying to stay connected to you. That means a lot, and we certainly do appreciate you so much. Now, I want you to be a digital disciple. What does that mean? That means you share the word. Share what God is doing throughout this service with other people. Right now, while you're sitting there, you can be a digital disciple and say, hey, tune in, log on, have all your followers now. Know that you are streaming. Let them know. Share Christ with others, y'all. This is what's so important because we believe God is just doing great things in this space. And I'm telling you, this word, I've been just so geeked about it because we're going to talk about strength today. Woo, and I promise you, it's going to bless your life. We're going to prepare right now to worship God in our giving. Now, I want to give God glory because I tell you, God is so amazing. And I've been doing a lot of cool things virtually and able to do house blessings virtually yesterday, all this month. And you'll be seeing those shortly uh, in this month and uh, some other things we've been able to do. God has been blessing folks in a pandemic. And I believe it's because people understand the power of covenant, staying connected to God. Our tithe matters. And we are a tithing congregation unapologetically. We, we've been taught that. And when you are a tithing person, whatever happens in the world's economy has nothing to do with you because your blessings come from above. Right now, I want you to do that. Putting that tithe first, 10% of what God has blessed you with, Lord, that belongs to you. The storehouse is where I'm being fed the word of God. And all around this country, people are calling Mount Zion their church home, and this is the place where they're being fed spiritually. We thank you so much for tithing. And then as you sow a seed, this is good ground to sow offering, tithe and offering. Give an offering that represents your love for God as God has prospered you. Thank you for continuing to support the vision as well. We believe God. I'm believing God, y'all. You... I'm believing God this year that this ministry is still going to be debt free. This year, I'm, I'm claiming it. In Jesus' name, I am claiming it and standing on it. So I want you to help us do that. So right now, if you want to text to give, you can do that right now. That's the information on the screen. Text, keyword, all the information there. Some of you already know how to do it. And then, of course, we thank God for those of you that mail in your offering. You can do that. Mail it in to Mount Zion Baptist Church, Finance Department, 7594 Old Hickory Boulevard, White's Creek, Tennessee, 37189. We appreciate you so much. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the blessing we have to give. Bless every family, every household, and we thank you for covenant giving and covenant blessing. In Jesus' name, amen.
avoid the Bible, you avoid church and or prayer, that's how you know you got a spirit of fear. The danger in those three responses is fight, flight, or freeze, which means that we may flee from the very thing that's designed to help us. I see this happen all the time. I ask people, when we were in the physical space, they hadn't seen you in church. Yeah, I've been busy. I had a lot going on. You're, you're running from something. And even in the virtual space, you think, you know, how do you miss church in the virtual space? <laughs> you can watch it anytime. What are you running from? Right? See, whether intentional or not, you got to get to a place where you understand and take a moment to wonder why you so vehemently, you know, don't stream most of the time. Why, why, do you, why are you falling off? Why do you see people, you know, rather than being consistent, they, they go on back and revert back to habits they had in the physical space. People of God, inside a, a spirit of fear. You're worried about something or you're concerned instead of bringing the problem to God. Man, you got, you got to get to a point when your tooth hurts, you don't sit up and say, man, I'm, I'm just, Lord, I just, my tooth is killing me, but I, I, I'm not going to the dentist. You're going. You got to run to God, man, and stop trying to figure out things yourself. Mount Zion, virtual villages are back for the fall sessions. These are interactive communal spaces where like-minded persons can bond through healthy dialogue, shared faith experiences, and the life-giving presence of a supportive community. Whether it's the warmth of sisterhood, the bond of brotherhood, connecting with other couples, or mixing and mingling with singles, there is a place for everyone. And we're excited that you have the opportunity to be a part. Connect with the village today by visiting our virtual connect page at mtzionnashville.org under the About tab. After you've signed up, be a blessing and offer the gift of community by inviting someone else to join with you. In times like these, community and support are crucial to our well-being, and Mount Zion has you covered. Our text to give procedures have been enhanced too. Sending a text to 267 MTZ Seed will send an actual text message of your gift. First, start a new text message, sending it to 267 MTZ Seed. That's 267 689 7333. Then, type your giving keyword along with the amount. For example, to tie $20, type Tithes 20 in the message box. Available giving keywords are Tithes, Offering, Vision, TV partner, and other. That's it. Giving is more simple and easy to manage. God, we love you. And we praise you. And we just want to be in your presence. You said, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadows of the Almighty. And God, we want to dwell in your place, Lord. We want to abide in your shadows. So our prayer today is that you will take over this place, take over our hearts, take over our minds, take over our spirits. And this is our prayer as we sing this song to you and say, over this place, sweet spirit, sweet spirit, take over this place, take over this sweet spirit, sweet spirit, sweet spirit, sweet spirit, sweet spirit. take over this place, take over this place, take over this place, take over this place.
take over this place. Healing spirit. We need you to heal on today, God. And take over this place. Take over this. I got one more. He's a mighty spirit. Mighty spirit. Take over this place. Take over this place. Take over this place, O oh Lord. Speak now to our hearts that we might be blessed. Take over this place, sweet Holy Spirit, that somebody's soul will be saved. We give your name the glory. We give your name the praise. We believe. It's already done. In Jesus' name, amen. The word of the Lord today, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 and verse 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The power to be. Today I want to focus in on be strong. You know, there's a common refrain in culture that says tough times don't last, tough people do. As a believer, all of us have had our fair share of difficulties and tests and trials and We've had our share of tribulations, and that was a day in all of our lives that we kind of felt that we got into a relationship with Jesus Christ that we'd have some exemption from some of this stuff. But as you've grown and matured, you begin to realize that there were no exemptions from these struggles, that your faith will be tested, your resolve will be stretched, and you will have moments when you go through things that will make your knees buckle. <laughs> All of us have these moments in our lives that are a part of our developmental process as a believer. And if you've never experienced tough times, how would you ever know what God was able to do? It's something revelatory in these moments. If I have never experienced a tough time in my life, how would I ever know to look to the hills and what come in my help? If I've never experienced a level of weakness, how would I ever know that his strength was made perfect in my weakness. If I had never experienced a moment like that, how would I ever know that his grace was sufficient for me? Today, I want to help you understand the power of what it means to be strong. Because, see, tough times are no match for tough people. As children of God, it's important for us to never fold under pressure. We have to maintain our convictions. We must maintain our convictions while we're going through the pressurized moments of life. We have to believe that as a result of all that we endure, that there are lessons in the midst of it. While you're watching me now, there are specific lessons that God has given to you in the midst of all that you've gone through. And actually, you really have to give yourself a little credit based on what you've already been able to survive. When you think about some of the things you've already endured, sometimes you've got to pat yourself on the back and say, I did come through something. But then we often hear people throw out the phrase, you know, just be strong, hang in there right now without having any situational awareness of what people are dealing with, particularly in their acute moments of pain. But I want you to know as we continue in this series today, I want you to understand the power to be, but I want you to know what it means to be authentically strong. Not to fake it, but to really understand where strength comes from. And a part of understanding that means that I've got to recognize the warfare that I'm dealing with and know how to navigate these seasons of spiritual warfare. And what makes this interesting, and I believe it's important for all of us to understand, as Paul shares with the church at Ephesus, this idea of spiritual warfare, that we must understand that strength is developed by the experiences that God allows. Because whatever God allows is designed to develop you, not to destroy you. Okay? I want you to get that. You'll never develop as a believer 
if you're not given difficult seasons to navigate. Life is not designed to be just sunny days. It is designed for you to have cloudy days, tough spots in order that you might develop certain traits and attributes. We often don't realize what we're made of when we're going through seasons of ease. It's when we're going through those tough moments when we realize what we're really made of. Every trainer will tell you that strength is built in resistance. That when you have experienced resistance, <laughs> you go to the gym and it's the resistance that causes muscles to grow. It is the resistance that causes abs to flatten. In other words, you reach your ideal state physiologically through resistance. If that is the case, it is also the case in the spirit that sometimes stuff you are whining about, people who resisted you, some people who didn't even know you and didn't like you, and some people you poured your life into and they yet didn't want you, and now you wonder what's going on in my life. God is just allowing these things for you to build a certain strength you otherwise would never have. In the military, they have this, uh, this intensive training, right? ITX, simulation of warfare. Every soldier has to go through this extensive training. This training is over the charts, right? It's off the charts because they have to simulate a variety of experiences. And sometimes they have to over-simulate them to give the worst possible scenario so that a soldier would never be caught off guard no matter what occurs in their life. In other words, every believer, listen at this, should expect some battles. As a child of God, I want you to get this. Paul's word here is about spiritual warfare. That even Paul, Peter rather, says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. Wow. As a child of God, you got to know that's purpose on your life. The enemy is not going to sit back and give you a free pass. He's going to attack you with everything he has. And what you are experiencing is called warfare. Let's just go ahead and call it what it is. It is warfare. And there's a spiritual attack occurring on your life and my life. And you have to understand, if you are not spiritual, then this is what's going to happen. You're going to be caught off guard. Anybody who's not spiritual, the attack will always catch you off guard. You'll be sitting up talking about, how did this happen to me? What's going on? Because you're not spiritual. You're always caught off guard by attacks. But those of us who are spiritual, we already know to expect it because we know when we would do good, evil is on every hand. Number two, you personalize the attack. When you're not spiritual, you take everything personally. Why me? Everybody's after me. The attack is on me. You don't realize that you're not the only one going through what you're going through. Everybody watching me right now is going through some of the same things you're dealing with. But if you're not spiritual, you personalize the attack. And then number three, you attempt to remedy in the flesh. You try to solve it yourself. You try to solve it through conflict. You want to go fight somebody. You want to go get back at somebody. You want to put something on Facebook to clap back at somebody. Because you don't realize it is a spiritual thing. You're dealing with it in the flesh. See, what you got to know is that you are spiritual. And when you are spiritual, you fight spiritually. Woo. And as a result, listen, when the battle comes, here's what you know. Here's what you know. Every battle comes with benefits. <laughs> I, I think somebody ought to just say that every battle comes with benefits. There's nothing God allows you to go through that you won't get something out of it. When you look over your life at some of the things that you've endured, you've got to say you got something out of it. The benefit in the battle meant that everything I've gone through has developed me, put things in me that I otherwise would not have had. What? Let me help you. Maybe a stronger prayer life. You never would have prayed like you pray, had you not gone through some of the stuff you've gone through. I see people in my past that did me wrong. I'm like, I want to thank you. They say, for what? Because you increased my prayer life. Number two, a stronger relationship with God. You wouldn't be streaming in right now. You wouldn't be watching this by television if it were not for some of the things you've gone through. Your relationship has gotten so strong with God because now you put your dependence upon him. Three, a stronger sense of discernment concerning people in your life. Now you're not naive. 
You don't take everybody at face value. God has given you a whole nother level of discernment concerning folks coming in your face, smiling, ha ha, he he. No, now, based on what you've gone through, you see much clearer. And then you have a stronger determination to reach your goal. Nothing's going to turn you back now. Based on what you've gone through, man, if that stuff didn't kill you, ain't nothing you're going through now that's going to stop you from reaching your goal. That's why you got to thank God for your mountains and thank him for your valleys and thank him for the storms he brought you through. If you never had a problem, you wouldn't know what faith in his word could do. You got to give God glory for every experience because all of it was working together for your good. Now, here's the deal. Spiritual authority is necessary for your survival. See, when you understand this, you're going to need a certain level of authority. See, Paul uses it this way, that you cannot be a wimp in the kingdom. This is about warfare, man. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. This is about authority that causes you to stand against a multitude of attacks all at the same time. Fact is, is there can be no authority without order. See, if you are not in order, how can you have authority? How can a thing have power when there is no order? Let, let me see if I can make it make sense. That's why they have on signs that no longer function on vending machines. They say, out of order because there's no power. <laughs> you, you'll get that in a minute. Wherever there's no power, there's no order. You see, once my understanding of authority is clear, my response to my situation gets clear. I need everybody just to put in your timeline or just say it around your house. Just say, I have authority. Say it again. I have authority. See, you can't be a coward and a Christian at the same time. <laughs> As a believer, what you got to know, man, is that when you show up, you show up with a certain level of authority. You ever wonder why when Jesus showed up, demons trembled? We know who you are. What do we have to do with you, Jesus? Because the spirits recognize the authority. Game recognizes game. You show up and you get afraid. You, you intimidated. Why are you intimidated? The reason why certain spirits are running and fleeing and people are acting crazy when you show up, because in the spirit realm, spirits recognize authority. As a believer, your authority in the earth, man, there are five things that happen when you release that authority in the, in the earth realm. One, you release faith and make an impact on things in the spirit world. My thought is, says, I release faith. When I release faith, things start happening in the spirit. Whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven, loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. Number two, you release God to work on your behalf. My authority and my faith work together. And now I'm saying, God, you can go to work on my behalf now because you can trust me to get out the way. And number three, you declare God's will for your life in the earth. I declare it is not God's will for my life for me to suffer in this space. It is not God's will for my life for my child to die. It is not God's will for my life for me not to have provision. So you start declaring that with authority, not with intimidation. And then you, you make the devil aware that you know what is lawful for you in the earth. You say, devil, wait a minute. <laughs> I know my rights and my privileges as a child of God. I know who I am. I am a kingdom citizen, and I have a right to certain things. The devil is trying to hold back things from you to make you think you don't have a right to be blessed. You don't have a right to speak healing over your life. The devil is a liar. And you let the devil know that he no longer has a say-so in your life. Man, I I've gotten to the point in my life that my level of authority is, is such that I'm like, devil, I'm not even paying you any attention. You have no authority in my life. Devil, you have no authority over my mind, over my spirit. Nothing you speak into my life because I understand my position of authority. Here's the deal. See, God has given you power to prevail. The Bible says be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. To operate in this level of authority, I want to talk to you for a moment, means this, that we are not strong in and of ourselves. We all, I mean, there are moments when we experience a level of weakness that we're like, Lord, how can I, how can I go on? I know I've been there like, Lord, I, I don't have anything left. But it's in those moments when I begin to realize where my strength comes from. Our strength and our power comes from him. 
And Paul discovered this when he had a thorn in his flesh and he realized, man, Lord, I don't have any power to deal with this. Can you move it? And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. You see in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, when Jesus tells the disciples to go right to the upper room and wait until power comes down, what he's really saying is that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Then you'll be witnesses. Then you'll be able to do what I ask you to do. You cannot do this in your physical prowess, in your intellectual capacity. You have to do this under the power of the Holy Spirit. So when you find yourself getting weak and, and you realize, well, well man, I, I just don't feel like I can go on. I'm just so tired and beat down. That's because you're trying to operate in an authority in your flesh. The authority is in the Spirit of God. Two kinds of authority. There's two words for authority here in power, right? There's this excusia and dudamus. These are Greek words, excusia and dudamus, right? Excusia kind of represents the uh, authority to do a thing, like the, the, the moral influence. And then there is the word dudamus, which represents inherent power, power. So excusia uh, says that I have the right to be here, and, and, and dudamus says I have the power to back it up, right? So a man goes to his uh, pastor and says, I got a, a demon in my house, and can you, can you get him out? I love telling this story, <laughs> and boy... He says, what's the problem? He says, well, the demon has my furniture all turned upside down and the floor shakes and all this stuff. And he says, yeah, you've got a demon. The pastor says, okay, I'll come to your house. The pastor brings this anointing oil. He comes to the house. And sure enough, as soon as the pastor hits the door, the curtains fly out, the floor starts shaking, knives and forks fly around the room. And then the man is so afraid, he gets behind his pastor and hides. And the pastor said, devil, under the authority of Jesus Christ, leave this man's house. And sure enough, the curtains stop flying out and the knives and forks remain still and the floor stops shaking. The man is so happy, he embraces his pastor, but his pastor wants to teach him a lesson on spiritual authority. His pastor said, devil, get back in here. The man there is trembling. His knees are buckling. What are you doing? What are you doing? But he's trying to teach him something about excusia and dudamus. <laughs> He said, devil, before you came in here, my member's bed was against that wall. The dishes were in that, in, that, in that cabinet. The knives and forks were in that drawer. The books were over there on that bookcase. Now you put it back. So you don't just have authority to tell the devil to leave. You got authority to declare. You got to put back everything you put out of place. I'm talking to somebody right now. You got to tell him, put it back. Put back my money. Put back my marriage. Put back my ministry. You're going to put back everything, my health. You're going to put it back. You don't have authority. I have authority greater than the enemy in my life. You got to speak that over your life. And people of God, God also gave you a wardrobe to win. And let me tell you something. Paul says that's why you got to put on the whole armor of God. I know you like to dress. you like me. You like to dress. But you better learn something. You can be all fly. You can be straight up dressed on your way to church and be completely naked spiritually. You got to get to a place where you understand the spiritual armor of God. You see, here's the deal. God never sends something in your life without the proper equipment for you to handle the battle. Every garment you have is necessary. And when you think about this for a moment, I want to walk you through this because the Bible lists in that Ephesians 6, it gives you all of the different armor that we as soldiers in the body of Christ must have. Now, we're dealing with a Roman culture here, and I want to break this down because when you think about the armor of God, let, let's, let's examine this. Have your loins girt with truth, the belt of truth. Let's deal with that, number one. The belt of truth, right? Because every garment you, he gave you is necessary. I want you to say this. Every garment is necessary. Every garment is necessary, all right? So then that's the belt of truth. Let, let's, let's deal with that because the belt of truth means that the belt or the garment that the Roman soldier wore was necessary for holding everything else up. Now, I'm going to let you grab this in the atmosphere, that a loose life makes a loose belt. And the reason why everything in your life is falling down and falling apart may be because you don't have no discipline in your loins. I'm going to let that sit there for a moment. You see, you got to understand when you let truth hold you up, then that's when everything else will be standing in your life. Here's the second one, the breastplate of righteousness. Now, why is this important? Because all of your vital organs, 
are connected or protected by the breastplate. When a soldier went to battle, all of his vital organs, his heart, his lungs, and liver, all were protected by the breastplate of right, which means when the arrow came, it could not pierce the breastplate of righteousness. In the spirit, what does that mean? That means that when I walk in righteousness, God covers those things that are vitally important in my life, right? Reason why my heart stays covered, because I walk in righteousness. You look at all the times your heart was broken damaged, it was because <laughs> that was a piercing of your unrighteousness. But then look at this, number three is the sandals of the gospel of peace. Have your feet shod with the gospel of peace, right? This is important because it suggests when soldiers would go to battle, you know, oftentimes they would, they would end up, you know, uh, going to battle and, and their feet oftentimes would be damaged by a variety of different things in the field. They would put on these very thick sandals. Why is that important? Because the gospel becomes a firm foundation that I am standing now on a firm foundation that the good news of the gospel. And then here's number four. It suggests that I have the shield of faith. And this is powerful because a Roman soldier had to have a shield. The shield of faith means that I block every dart of the enemy. Things come at me, but they don't get to me because I block. But there's something even more fascinating about the shield of faith because, see, what the enemy knows that you need to know today, watch this, is that the shield of faith is not just for you to use. But can you imagine the Bible says that two or three of us touch and agree? Let me show you how soldiers use their shields of faith. When soldiers came together, whoo, they understood if you put your shield with my shield and my shield with your shield and we put our shields, we are impenetrable. We can go against any army coming at us because we're all working together. That's what I'm talking about. When the body of Christ can ever put our shields together, man, the enemy has no place in our lives. But then here it is, number five, the helmet of salvation. I got a saved head. The devil is not going to mess with my mind. My mind is going to be covered and then I like this. Watch this. Number six, the sword of the spirit, meaning that now this was a powerful because the word gladius, when we get the word gladiator, this word was powerful. When a, when a soldier knew how to use his sword, he could even pierce certain armor because he was so trained to do this. The word of God is a piercing word. It'll cut through. It'll go through any place where it needs to go. And people of God, listen carefully. Number seven is prayer. To understand that prayer is truly a weapon. That I know when I I pray to God, I stand on God's word, and I believe God. There's somebody out there right now, you know that prayer changes things. Prayer is a weapon for the believer. And if you get this, if you understand how this armor in warfare, the word is for offense. The word of God, the sword of the spirit was never for defense. It was for offense. Meaning that when you get the word and you're built up in God's word, I'm not preaching this word for you to be passive. I'm preaching this word for you to go into the enemy's territory with authority and take back everything the devil tried to take from you. I'm preaching this word for you to walk in the level of authority and say, devil, you will not have my family. You will not have my education. Why? Because I understand that I got enough word in my life. Listen, the word was an offensive weapon which means I'm not just reacting. Man, I'm going in declaring this will not happen under my watch. That's how I begin to walk in authority. And people of God, I can declare no weapon formed against me shall prosper because I'm full of the word of God. I am covered spiritually and walking in the right wardrobe. And when the dust settles, you should still be standing. Now, I don't know who this is for, but I believe God had you watch this today because... What the text says is, I love when Paul says, and after having done all <laughs> to stand. I, I, I used to hear that word all the time, and I, I thought, Lord, after having done all of what? After all the attacks, all the setbacks, after all the things you've been dealing with that you thought were going to last forever, trouble don't last always, after all this stuff is over, God says, I need you to still be standing. You have to have faith to face it. What does strength look like in this context? It looks like this, that all the armor was on the front. None of the armor God gave you was to cover your back, which means you're going to have to fight facing everything the enemy is putting in your life. We often have this spirit of escapism that causes us to want to run 
and flee and run from challenges and difficulty. But let me tell you something. In this season, you gotta go on and you gotta go on and face it. You gotta go on and deal. You can't tuck your tail and run. You gotta go ahead on and confront the stuff that's been after your destiny. Confront every generational curse. You gotta confront everything the enemy tried to speak against you. You gotta confront all of that stuff that's been in your house. You gotta confront it. And when you confront it, you gotta go in with authority and you gotta go in declaring, I'm going in strong. And I know somebody may be saying, but what about my back? Because the enemy, he's so sly that while I'm out here trying to confront this, the enemy might try to come at my back because there's no armor on my back. And what am I gonna do when the enemy tries to do a sneak attack, Bishop? I got all my energy confronting this stuff and the enemy snuck up behind me. Well, maybe somebody should have reminded you what David told you. They see, because while I'm out here fighting this battle and I'm standing strong and confronting all the stuff I gotta confront, I don't have to worry about my back. You wanna know why? Because according to Psalm 23, the Bible declares in verse 6, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I thank God that he's always got my back. And people of God, let me leave this with you. You got to have faith because faith will keep you on your feet. Listen to me. This is so important. The fact that you're still standing. What that means is that you refuse to end up on your back. <laughs> When you're strong in the Lord and the power of his might, stay on your feet. I'm talking to somebody right now with all the things that have happened to you. I know it. Bishop, I, it knocked the wind out of me. But God told me to tell you, be strong in the power of his might. I know your strength is gone. I know you don't have anything else to fight with. I know you feel like I don't have anything left. But see, that's why I'm preaching this word, because your strength is not in yourself. Your strength is in God. You will not quit. You cannot succumb. You can't drop out of school. You can't put your career on the side now. Just because your heart got broken in that relationship, you can't give up right now on what God has for your life. Just because people betrayed you, just because you went through that tough spot, this is not the time for quitters. It's a time to be strong in the Lord. The power of his might. might. Let me tell you something. An amazing thing happened in New York City. In New York City, History tells us that that was a great blackout. And during the great blackout, the emblem of liberty in America, the Statue of Liberty, was still shining bright. People were so astonished by this. How in the world could the Statue of Liberty still be shining, standing, when all the city is in darkness? <laughs> They asked the engineer of the city. One reporter said, can you explain this phenomenon? The whole city's in darkness and look out there. She's still standing and still lit. <laughs> and the engineer of the city said, you don't know? He says, no, please tell me. How could this be? <laughs> and the engineer said, well, the reason the Statue of Liberty is still illuminated and still standing in light while the whole city is in darkness because the power source of the Statue of Liberty is not in New York. It's in New Jersey. There are people <laughs> who are wondering why you are still standing. They're trying to figure out where you get that power from. They're trying to figure out how you still go into class, how you still go into work, how you still holding your family together. Would you please remind them your power it's in another place. You thank God for Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 and 21. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. I thank God that I'm not out here on my power and my strength, but I'm out here on his strength. To God be the glory. You will not give up. Child of God, you made it this far. God is your strength. Strength like no other. Lift your hands where you are. Wherever you're watching this around the world, lift your hands. I want to speak strength in every weak space in your life. We all have seasons and moments 
or we feel like we can't make it and we're breaking it. We're like, Lord Jesus, I can't hold it together. But let me tell you something, God, let you hear this word because he wanted you to know that he's your strength. Ah, strength like no other. And today, I want to give you a wonderful opportunity. You're hearing this today and the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you and I want you today to know God loves you so much. And this word spoke to you wherever you are around the world. You listen to me and tears are in your eyes. I already know. Because I know what it means to be in those weeks. I've had them myself. Moments where I'm like, Lord, what's wrong with me? I can't shake this. Those are those moments when you got to learn to pray more. You got to say, Lord, you're revealing something to me. You're using these experiences to build strength. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I want to let you have that relationship right now. I want you to send me an email right now. I want you salvation at mtzionnashville.org. Now I want you to email me now, wherever you are, do it. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ. You want to come back in your relationship with him. You need a church home. You've been praying about it wherever you are around the world. Salvation, mtzionnashville.org. We'll be your pastor. We'll be your church. It doesn't matter what city you're watching. Nashville, Goodlessville, Brentwood, Franklin, all around, any of y'all, even all around the United States, all around the world, we can do that. And then maybe you're a college student, you move to Nashville, maybe you're virtually in school and you're like, that Nashville's gonna be my home for a few years, I need a covering. Maybe you're a professional student, in medical or dental school or law school or working on your MBA or whatever, your PhD, we want you to know that Mount Zion covers students all the time and I'd love to have you a part of our ministry. So right now, I want you to do that. And I cannot wait. And I want you to remember that God is your strength. Strength like no other. I want you to remember, child of God, that a part of being is saying that I'm strong. And it's even okay to say, I don't feel strong, Pastor. I feel, listen, but you understand that your power is in another place. So today, I want you to stay encouraged. I want you to share this message with somebody who's on the edge, on the verge of giving up, and you're like, you need this word in your life because I was there. I know what it's like to be broken, to feel like I ain't got nothing left, but then God came in right on time and gave you the word you needed. I want you to do that. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I love you. I appreciate you. And I pray God's blessings be upon you. May his strength be your strength. In Jesus' name.